Clap your hands and give him praise. Lift your voices. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated as you take your Bibles. We are going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Praise the Lord. We are still talking about walking worthy. A walk worthy of God. Praise ye the Lord. Are you there? So you're going to walk worthy of God who has called you. Nobody has called you, you know. Only God called you. See that? But the important thing is that many are called, but few are chosen. And the Bible said, make sure of your calling and your election. You get it? Many are called, but what? Few are chosen. You got to understand that. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Are you there? Glory to God. So he tells us then we must learn how to possess our vessels in sanctification and in honor. Not in the lust of the flesh or what he called the lust of concupiscence. Praise the Lord everybody. You go to chapter 5 and Paul is talking to the people of Thessalonica and he's saying to them, But of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Everybody, are you there? He said, for you yourself perfectly, know perfectly, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. I say to you today, it's going to catch many people off guard. That's why Jesus gave the warning. He said, in this life, do not let yourself be taken up with the things of this life. Do not let your heart be filled with all sort of stuff. Because he said that, you ought to be watching because he's coming. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. And so you got to understand, the world that you are living in now, hardly people talk about the coming of the Lord. The preachers are going upside down. Are you hearing me? And they are telling you all sort of stuff. Some are Illuminati people now, and they are telling you all sort of nonsense. They use pretty words to attract people because a whole lot of them, they want money. Oh, Hallelujah. And they want a large following, but you got to understand, he tells you the Lord is coming soon. And you got to understand that too. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord. So he said that the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. So when you read the book of Revelation, several other places in the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, you begin to see what God said in the day of the Lord. And you got to believe that this world is going to get worse and worse. There are going to be false preachers all over, deceivers, telling people all sort of stuff, using nice words, sounding all eloquent, and everything that they say, it will be nothing that they're really saying. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. That's what the Bible says. Glory to God. But he said, listen this. But when all of them telling you it's peace and safety, sudden destruction... Cometh upon them as travail. And he's talking about times of tribulation. Travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So you got to understand, that's why God said judgment will begin first in his house. And if you don't understand what God is saying, you continue playing false. And you continue to pretend. You continue to think that you have the Holy Ghost and you're walking in the opposite direction then judgment of God is going to fall on you if you fail to repent of your sins. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord. If because of you, the way of truth is evil spoken of, then judgment will come on you, except you turn around and repent of your sins. Hallelujah, somebody. Because you got to understand, God is watching over his people now. Glory to God, somebody. So you got to understand, even in the time of Elijah, when Jezebel came into Israel, married Ahab. Everybody remember her? Praise ye the Lord. She was a princess from Sidon. Her father was a king. And you got to understand, when she came, they knew Yahweh, God of Israel. But they turned toward the idols. So when she came now, she only made it even worse. And you got to understand, she called God's name, but didn't mean anything behind it. Because when she got Naboth killed to give the vineyard to Nab, you got to understand, she said, that he cursed Yahweh 
And so she called false witnesses against him and they stoned him to death and she took the vineyard and gave it to her husband. You got to understand, there were false prophets there and the people believed them. When he called about 400 of them and all of them came and he said, prophesy. And he set up the altar and all of that and they all there calling on Baal because they're thinking that Baal was their real God. Praise he the Lord. But there's only one true God. And the one true God, hallelujah, he prevented any fire from coming anywhere. And he alone proved himself to be God by causing fire to come down on the sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. But you got to understand, Elijah was a true prophet. And after he was finished, they still wanted to kill him anyway. So you think this world going to get better? Think again. You think when you preach the truth, they're going to smile in your face? Think again. Elijah was disappointed. And so that's why he went and he lied down and he said, Lord, take my life because I'm the only prophet left. I preach righteousness, all of this. He thought they would have turned to God and they didn't. See, they didn't. He had all the fire in him. He did miracles. He did signs and wonders. He proved to them that God was a real God. And shortly after that, he had to run for his life because she wanted to kill him. Praise ye the Lord. And when the Bible said she wanted to kill him, it doesn't mean she herself was going. She sent her people to kill him. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. So I'm telling you, if you're going to walk worthy of the Lord, you have to learn to stand up for the truth. Praise ye the Lord. Some people have to run for their lives when they go one place to preach and they have to run for their lives, go somewhere else. Because people don't always like to hear the truth. When John the Baptist said to Herod, you cannot have your brother's wife. Leviticus tell you, tells us that. And so Herod put him in prison. And Herodias didn't like it at all. And so when the time came, daughter dance, all of that. And she said, he said, I'll give you even half of my kingdom because of how you dance so nicely. And she went home and asked her mom. What should I ask for? She said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. Because she was angry, vexed with the man of God, because he simply said, you should not have your brother's wife. He took Philip's wife. See, brought her in his house. This is the generation we are living in now. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. And you got to understand, somebody got to stand up and say, it is wrong, it is a sin. Somebody got to cry out and say, the Lord is angry with you, with that kind of thing. That's the time you're living in. See, everybody's going to be crying out all sort of stuff. Jeremiah, when he met Ananiah, and Jeremiah said, God is going to judge this land, and God is going to bring the king of Babylon into this land. They said, you're a traitor. And they basically thought Jer um, Jeremiah sold out to Babylon. But you got to understand, Ananiah rose up. And Ananiah was respected among them. And so he took a yoke and he got it and he broke it on his leg. And he said, thus say the Lord, within two years time, God is going to overthrow all Babylon and whatever. And the, they will never come in this place. And Jeremiah turned around, walked away and said, that was well said, Ananiah. And so God said, go back and tell him, because he gave my people false hope, God said he will not live. And shortly after, he was dead. False prophets. Are you understanding that? At that time, they were among the people. And they rose up among the people. The true prophet Jeremiah was thrown in a dungeon. He was placed in quagmire. And all of that stuff they did to him because he spoke the truth. Praise he the Lord. Now you understand what I'm saying? You got to stand up for the truth. It took him to prison. It took Elijah to run for his life. And you got to understand the times are now upon us again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God said, wake up if you are going to walk with him. See, sudden destruction is going to come upon them. That's why he's going to deal with his house first. And none of you will escape who walk in the opposite direction of which God determined that we must walk in. Praise ye the Lord. So he tells you he's going to come as a woman in pain to have her children. But he said, verse 4, look at it. He said, but ye brethren are not in darkness that 
that they should overcome come you as a thief. That means if you're walking in darkness, it's going to overcome you or overtake you as a thief. Praise ye the Lord. In other words, it's going to come unexpectedly when you're not looking for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So the first thing he tells you, if you're going to walk with God and walk worthy of God who called you, you must learn to be children of light. Light, there mean, as Old Testament will tell you, children of truth. The Bible said, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. That's in Isaiah chapter 8. Praise ye the Lord. So you got to understand then, God is bringing the whole world, and, and, and they got to understand, his Torah still stands today. And all the other people telling you the law is done away with and so on, it's God's law you see now. Governments are what? Breaking. Are you understanding that? Passing laws, okay, against what God said and to refute what God said and to change a generation to come. But God is not going to what? Put up with it. Are you hearing me? God is going to judge the nations because of their evil and wickedness. So in Jeremiah chapter 25, God said, in the day of the Lord, he's going to judge from one end of the world to another end of the world. He took the cup and put it in Jeremiah's hand. And he took it to the nations and he said, drink of this cup. And they would not drink. He said, you shall surely drink. Because if I judge Judah and I judge Israel, you will never escape my judgment either. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So he said, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, there will be dead bodies all over the earth, he said. Because they are broken the everlasting covenant. So God said, I bring judgment upon the earth. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God, somebody. So you have to be children of light. We are not of the night. Nor of darkness. Are you understanding that? Darkness is obscurity. When you can't see plain how to walk with God. Because your heart is evil. Therefore, let us not sleep. As do others. Are you seeing that? But let us watch or be alert and sober. And the opposite to that is not to be drunk. So we must be alert. So when I'm telling you what is going on in the earth, you need to listen carefully. Because you got to understand, if you are sleeping, it's going to creep up on you. And before long, some of us will be walking in the way of other people who call themselves Christians. Praise be the Lord somebody. You know why you watch television and you will see there are great evangelists and all of this that they say. And you will notice that some of them are what they call great women of God on television. Have you ever seen them? They don't even know how to submit themselves or even cover their heads because they say those things are what? The here is now what you're covering. God never said a thing like that because God said cover your head. Are you seeing that? So some of us who are holiness people walking with God... We see these things and we emulate and pattern them, bring them into the church. And if you are young and others start following you and so on, before long, that which was sacred and holy, all of a sudden becomes unholy now. See? And so people adopt customs and traditions, bring them into the church. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God. I don't care what anybody say, but I'll tell you this, right? I am not... When it comes to like music and all of that, I listen carefully to what people sing when they sing. I analyze what they say. And you got to understand, a lot of songs that you're hearing, sometimes they cause people to be faithless because they sing nonsense in their song. A man may have a negative experience, he put it in a song, it become a famous song and everybody's singing it when they're not even listening to what the words are saying. The great philosopher Socrates, he said, if you want to change a nation, change the music, and you will change a nation. What do you see today now? Internet came. Now, you want to murder somebody, you can go on the internet and find out how to do it. Poison people, find out how to do it. Bomb up people, you can find out how to do it. You want to see people having sex with dogs and animals, they're all on the internet, all these wickedness, this corrosion, and all these things are on the internet now. See? And you got to understand that people are getting addicted to pornography. And even, I heard about even some pastors, they got addicted to pornography. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. You, you, you got to understand, I am preaching to you, right? 
And then every what? I am addicted to pornography. What freedom I can bring you in Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. You know what it says? An adult thing. Adult thing? That is evil and iniquity that they're committing against God. And if there's any of you inside here that do the same, the judgment of God will come on you if you don't turn around too. There's a way with Satan when he comes in, he doesn't let go easily anymore. If you have them in your house, dump them. Dump them. Dump them. Dump them. Dump them. Only about a lady, and when she said that her husband... For a long time now, she didn't tell the church. She was trying to turn around her husband. Her husband's the pastor of the church. Man watches pornography. She said even just before he goes to church, up to the last minute before they go through the door, he turns it off. And then he goes to church and preaches to the people. Are you understand what I'm saying? She said she's trying to talk to him. The man wouldn't listen at all and so on. Now he's on Facebook. He has another woman. Are you hearing me? And saying that God said this is his next wife. You, you got to understand what's going on here. People are using the name of Jesus and they're calling the name and they're lying to people and destroying people's life. Glory to God. That's why the Bible tells you, your eyes must be open to what is happening around you. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. You must be children of light. And you must watch and be sober. Glory to God. That is why it's not every place you go, you can allow people to lay hands on you. I don't care if they speak in tongues. If your spirit doesn't know how to walk, no people, pull away. Because some of them, you will think is what? It's demons sometimes they release on you. And you don't really know. It's your ears, people. Be sober. For they that sleep, Sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunk in the night. And you know, he's telling you, sleep there, referring to, you are not aware of what is going on. You are drunk. When people are drunk, they're not in their right senses. They can't perceive anything easily because they're drunk. Praise ye the Lord. They are intoxicated with evil in this case. And as a result of that, they will call even evil things good and good things evil. That's the generation you live in now. So you're trying to talk to your kid and telling them how life goes. And they're going to tell you you're from old school. You tell them you can't shack up with people and live with them like that. They will tell you, mom, that's old school. And you have a whole group of them now telling you, Marriage is a traditional thing. It is not for our time now. Paul said the day will come when they will forbid getting married. You understanding that? You got to understand, you think you're sitting here. It's a generation out there bigger than even Tortola and the rest of the place. And many of them are intellectuals. They are bright. They are going to rise. They are going to go into politics. And the evil that they want to now bring upon the world through political systems is going to come to pass. You got to understand that one right there. Sister Bernard and I had a talk with one of our friends. Everybody's view has changed so radically now. And, and we, she was telling us certain things and then we asked the question. So people thought he was this, but what happened if he had married a guy? Would you still pay for his honeymoon? She said, yes, he's my son. And what? You were, if they come to your house to sleep, you'd allow them? And then she said, yes. So when I tackled her on the matter, she didn't want to talk about the matter no more. But you see how people mind of what? Shifted. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now you got to understand, my, my son couldn't come home, come tell me, but he has a girlfriend. And when I look as a boy coming through my gate, I boot both of them out my house or out my yard or whatever it is. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. How am I going to live with something like that? I don't mind him come to my fence, talk to me after that. But he ain't coming in my house, bringing no man inside here. Praise the Lord, somebody. You got to have your daughter and she come and tell you she has a boyfriend. And when you look, it's a girl who looks like a man coming to you. You got to understand what is really going down. This is what is happening now in your world. You think it's not happening in Tortola? Think again. And you know where some of them are? 
right in church. Preacher's not preaching nothing about that stuff no more. So everybody feel comfortable. Praise the Lord, somebody. So they don't like come gospel of Jesus. It's going to upset them too much. Clap your hands. Give the Lord praise. Give him glory, somebody. Verse 8. He said, and he implores us. Look at what he said. He's talking about those who are of what? The day. So he wasn't referring to everybody up in that church. He was referring to those who are righteous, who are walking in the day. Are you seeing that? Good. So he says, what he tells you. He said, be sober, conscious of what is happening. So he said, metaphorically speaking, or in a spiritual sense, put on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet the hope of salvation. If you go back to the priest, you will see what he refers to. The breastplate. Get it? The mitre on his head. Glory to God. And so he gave other words to demonstrate what he's talking. Because when people are fighting, you got to understand in a war, usually it's either here or here. Get it? So, in other words, then protect yourself. Protect your heart. Protect your walk with God. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Make sure your mind is in the right condition. Cover yourself, as he would say. Put on the helmet of salvation. Cover yourself. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now he went down and he said to us, look at what he said. You know all these things are happening in the earth. And in verse 11, this is where we falter all the time. We don't learn how to be there for each other sometimes. Hello, Jesus said, the love of many shall wax cold. In other words, people's love is going to grow cold. He said, when they see the things that are happening across the face of the earth, he said, many love, their love will wax cold. But he said, he that endure it to the end with their love intact, they shall be saved. So what is he telling you is that when you see the evil and the wickedness, you are going to reach a point, many people, where they don't trust anybody anymore. Are you following, following what I'm saying? If you go to the United States, you will see imprints of that already. That even if your car is broken down and you're on the wayside, thousands of people would pass before one stop. Again, because they don't trust anyone. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Or they're all about themselves. Clap your hands. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise again. So verse 11 he tells you. Wherefore comfort yourself together. And edify one another. Build up one another. Even as also he do. Are you seeing that? And we beseech you brethren. To know them which labor among you. And are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Are you seeing that? Pastors, elders, all of these kind of things. People reach a point today now. They don't want no pastor to tell them what to do. They don't want no elder to tell them what to do. They think that they can do what they want. If you come to a church or you come in the house of God. Then the Bible said you must obey them that have the rule over you. That is they instruct you in the Lord. Praise the Lord somebody. Because if they are not instructing you in the Lord. You don't need to obey what they say. And don't kid yourself. That you're doing what they say because they are in charge. No, if it is in the Lord, if it's not in the Lord, you don't need to follow it. Yeah, I put it in my mouth to tell you that. I'm not following nobody if I'm not following the Lord. I'm not doing what they say if it's against the Bible. Praise the Lord, somebody. So I told you one time, Shannon went to a church and the lady came, everybody not covering their heads. He and them used to be in argument all the time. Why aren't you covering your head? I thought you guys are Pentecostals. And so this other lady came from another church, and when she came, she always covered her head. And so everybody started asking questions. So the pastor met with her and told her he would prefer she does not cover her head because too many questions being asked. So when Shannon he said, he said to her, So what are you going to do about it? She said, She just, to prevent problems, just don't wear it. You understand what I'm telling you? 
See that? That's against the word of God. Now, why, why couldn't they come to church with their heads uncovered and she come with her head covered? Why why they have to bother her with her head covered? See, the pastor doesn't want to answer any question. Lady goes straight to 1 Corinthians 11, and then you see problems start now. Oh, glory to God, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you look foolish compared to the rest of the world, don't it? You go to another church somewhere, and you look in there, you alone have hat on your head, or covering your head, right? And sometimes you feel strange. You think I don't know some of you? You go right there, and you don't wear none either. Because you feel strange. But if you are proud of who you really are and proud to know you're following the word of God, you would wear your head covering and wouldn't even bother you at all because you'd have realized they're the one in the dark and you're the one in the light. Praise the Lord, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. It's a generation that you live in now that even people are chiding you when you do the right thing. Glory to God, somebody. Now, he also tells you, and I'll move down to 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that walk unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded, those who are weak in their mind, and support the weak. Be patient towards all men. You know, one of our problems in this church is intolerance. The time is coming to, see that? Just like this guy named Diotrephus in 2 John. When John sent folks down there, Diophatris, what he did, every one of them who welcomed anybody who John sent, Diophatris cast them out of the church. And he spoke against John the Apostle. Are you understand what I'm saying? And you got to understand the life that we are living now, get it as Christians. You have to understand who's walking with God and who's not walking with God. People are going to say, don't judge me and this and that, but you got to understand, you have to know who you're supporting and who you're not supporting. Are you with me, somebody? So you got to understand there are people who are unruly and there are times when you just have to warn them and leave them. See, can't beat your brain too far over them because sometimes they will get you off track because you spend too much time trying to what? Get them on the right track. Praise the Lord, somebody. But he tells you then, comfort. That means you have to give consolation to those who are feeble in their mind. They flip-flop sometimes, not exactly knowing if they must go left or right, but when they can lean on you, they can find a path too. Praise the Lord, somebody. And he tells you again, and you are people who are weak in their consciences. All of these things happen. And he said, be patient towards all men. Now notice what he said now, verse 15. What he said? See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Now you got to understand that L-O-V-E word. See, that's why he tells you, pray for them who will despitefully use you. Are you understand what I'm saying? Praise ye the Lord. There are times when your own brethren will abuse you. There are times when other people will. But he said, pray for those who despitefully what? Use you. They think they get away with it? No, they don't. See? God will vindicate you. But if you pray the right prayer and don't pray fire and brimstone for them, but you pray that God will have mercy on their soul, then you got to understand God is going to move on your behalf. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God, somebody. Now, Paul went down, and I see where he said here, slip down to near the bottom here. Now, the first thing he tells you here, you must learn to rejoice if you're going to walk worthy of the Lord. You must learn to rejoice. There are things that happen to you in life. In this life that we live in, life is difficult for some people. But in spite of how difficult it is, you must learn to rejoice. And the word rejoice in the Bible, it means joy sometimes. Like we would do here when we're dancing, right? And making noise. The effect it has is to bring a certain level of joy to your heart. Trusting in the Lord, knowing that everything is all right with God, even though I'm having problems 
right here. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Because you're going to find a generation that is coming up. They're going to love music. And believe me, just like Ezekiel chapter 28 tells you, Satan is built with musical instrument inside him. Are you hearing that? Good, he loves music. So he doesn't mind what? Stepping in what? What you call gospel music, sing rubbish for people to sing. Because some people, they only want to hear the pans and the, the, the keyboard and all that playing, and they're all gone and they're not listening to the words. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So I remember when Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie and all of them assembled the song USA for Africa, and they sang, everybody singing the song. We were singing the song at assembly, and all of a sudden, I, I looked down on the paper, and it said, like God has shown us by turning stone to bread. Choirs all over the world in their churches were singing that song. Nobody realized it said, like God has shown us by turning, turning stones to bread. See, that's how Satan gets in. He only changes one simple thing, and people would not notice it. Everybody singing Ringo Starr's song, I really want to see you, Lord, but it takes so long, my Lord. I, I went to church, and they were singing that. And one day when I was studying, I had my radio on while I'm studying. And then I listened till the song was finished. And in the background, the man was saying, when they were saying, hallelujah, he was saying, Hare Krishna. Subliminal messages in it. See that? Because Christians don't pay attention long enough to anything that they sing. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. But you must learn to what? Sing songs that uplift your spirit. Not rubbish, but things that really uplift your spirit, uplift your faith, and you rejoice in those things. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. The next thing he tells you, if you're going to walk with God, worthy of the Lord, and his calling, then you've got to learn to pray without ceasing. You ever look in here on Tuesday nights? Anybody ever see it? Hello. Everybody loves Jesus, but nobody wants to come to prayer meeting. Everybody loves Jesus, but they can't take the time to pray. You spend 15 minutes sometime on your knees, and you're up, and you came to prayer meeting. What prayer meeting? By, by the way, I, there are more than 15 people inside here. If you start praying for me, start praying for her, and the next, and the next, and the next, 15 minutes gone a long time, and you don't get up off your knees as yet. So the question is then, what really do you pray? And you said you walk with the Lord, right? Some of you say you have the Holy Ghost and you didn't want to come pray and meet it. Well, you tell me what's going down. Because if you walk with the Lord as you said you walk with the Lord, the fact of the matter is that you're almost rocking straight into the things that are happening in this end time. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, then pray without what? Ceasing. And he's not talking about you praying every minute, every day of the hour of the day, because you can't do that. He not, in other words, have a consistent prayer life. See that? You know why God takes so long to work for some of us? It's because of our inconsistent prayer. People are calling on God when things happen. And when nothing was happening, they don't spend time seeking the Lord. Then when you are in trouble now, you're trying to call on the Lord. But you are not so connected. See that? So you run and you call other people who you think connected to the Lord. Yet if you are connected to the Lord, you know how best to express your sorrows and your pain to God than the person who you are calling on. But, left, but you left it to somebody else. And the bad thing about it, the people who you call on, they'll be storming the throne of God night and day and you sit watching your TV. They fast for you and you are full in your belly all the time. Like you have some workers working for you while you enjoy yourself. See? So even on Tuesday nights, church is empty. You don't come to prayer meeting. Yet when anything happens in your life, you are here. And you want everybody now pray for you because you are here now. And if we dare leave you inside here and didn't cry with you, woe unto us when you finish with us. See? Glory to God, somebody. Clap your hands, give the Lord praise. 
So he said, pray without ceasing, and then he tells them now in verse 18. He didn't say, for all things give thanks, but he said, in everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You got to learn to give thanks in every situation. He didn't say for them. He said in them. Learn to give thanks. God preserve your life. God stands with you. In spite of all that you're passing through, you must learn to give him thanks because he has everything still in control. And he said, therefore, this is the will of God concerning. Hello, concerning you. That's the will of God. Now, verse 19 is a long one. Verse 19. A whole lot of people struggle with that one. Quench your spirit. <laughs> You're going to walk with God. And you got to understand, you got to stop doing that thing because you're fearful. You see people inside here doing some stuff sometimes and you know they're doing it and you don't want to tell them because you're afraid they're going to what? Curse you. You're afraid they're going to turn upside down on you. So you swallow it when God put it on your mind. You pray about it, but when you come and you see them to talk to them, you swallow it again. That's what you're doing, quenching the spirit. You think, you, you think it's coming in here, and because you didn't say, you are quenching the spirit? No. It's when God directs you by the Holy Ghost to do things, and you decide you don't want people to curse you, and you haul it in, and don't want to do what God said. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So you got to learn how to walk in the Spirit. And there are things that the Spirit will want you to do. It's not nice stuff you have to go tell people sometimes. But you got to tell them. And I'm talking be rude, like some of you think. Talking where God raised you up to go tell somebody. But sometimes you hold it back because, man, you said, how can I say this, Lord? How can I say that? How can I say that? And before long, you just swallow it and you don't do it. Somebody give the Lord a praise. So the time you're living in, my friends, you'll have to learn how to quench your spirit. Whether dignitaries, your own brethren and so on, and you see certain things, and your spirit is moved over it, you have to learn to say what God say. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Praise ye the Lord somebody. You have to see what God is telling you, and you can't spend the time to interpret anything that God is saying. Whoever you deliver it to, that's who they will know what God is saying. Praise ye the Lord. I'm not talking about judging people here. I'm talking the Spirit move on you, and you need to do what God said. Now, that's why he tells you in the next verse then, you must not despise prophesying. Hello? To despise is to reject. And you got to understand, we have so many false prophets around now, some people just totally, just outright reject prophets now. You got to see, if you're walking with the Spirit, you will know those who are true. If you're walking with the Spirit. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. I went into a church once, you know, and I think I told you already, but when I went in, and, and, and from whatever, my spirit just turned already, but when a man came on the pulpit, the man starts singing in tongues. Praise the Lord, somebody. Then by the time we reach near what? By now, 15 minutes, he's still speaking and singing in tongues. Then he changed gear and he started preaching and it's just all tongues. And then he starts singing in tongues again. And by the time the man was finished, up to now you don't hear a couple words in English. And then he just point down to the back. I have some books down there. Tell you how much the price is for it. And that was all. Then he wanted to collect offerings. I've been in the same church and there was a man who came and by the time I hit the door, God said, this is indeed a prophet. So my ears were up already now to listen to what he was going to say. And boy, when he finished preaching, my soul started jumping up and down inside me. Praise the Lord, somebody. And by the time they asked for offering, I took out all the money I had in my wallet and dropped right in the offering. 
is after that I thought about when I was going to go home. That's how excited I got. Praise ye the Lord. Are you understand what I'm saying? That's how excited I got because what? The word bring what? Life to me. So everything I had in that wallet, I dropped it and gave it to the Lord. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Are you understanding that? So God then will cause you to know those who are real if you are walking with God. That's why you got to pray. Glory to God, somebody. Now, as much as you trust people, as much as you might hold me in high esteem, don't ever miss. See, anything I tell you, find it in the Bible to prove it. Don't ever just take my word for it either. You must prove it for yourself that when you are finished and you're ready to speak it, you will never say, I say to you, but you'll say, the Bible said so. I was only the agent to show you what was in the Bible. Glory to God, somebody. Prove all things for yourself. Are you hearing me? If there's a source that you need to find, then find it, but prove it for yourself. Never. The time you're living in now, you cannot just take people's word for stuff. If they say the Bible said and you are not sure, go and find it for yourself. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. So some of you have problem listening to this preacher and that preacher and that. I can listen to any preacher because I can figure out what is and what is not. You understand? I can go to a Catholic church and sit down in there and listen to the priest. And I can still figure out what is what and what is not. I can read any book that anybody write to that said they know God. And I can still figure out what is what and what is not. See, the spirit causes you to do things like that. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Are you hearing me? So Paul tells you what? When you prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. In other words, then let go of those that are not. Glory to God, somebody. Now, some of you, you're not that discriminating. That's why some of you can't go to other people's church. Because you get confused when they're all finished. Because you don't know how to cipher things. And choose what is good and what is not good. You don't know to what? Leave it alone. You go home killing yourself over it. How come the preacher say this and how come the preacher say that? Well, if you know it's not biblical, why are you killing yourself over it? Let it go, man. Move on with what is good. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you hearing me? So he tells you now, abstain from all appearance of what? Evil. I tell you again, when we were in United Pentecostal Church, the pastor used to say, if, if, if you're going to a young lady's house, don't go alone. Especially if you like her, carry somebody with you. Are you understanding that? And if the girl is going to look for a guy, the same thing applies. You get it? Today, people don't put brakes on anything now. Are you understanding that? And you got to be careful how you walk. Are you getting it? Suppose Sister Bernard gone and every time somebody sees some woman walking on in and out of my house. I could have all the good stories to tell them I was praying with them and I was this. Yeah, they're going to believe me right then and there. Yes, right. Maybe that's what I'm doing. See? But you got to understand, if you're a wise person, me, if Sister Ward is up there, I'll call Sister Ward and say, Sister Ward, well, Angie's not here, but this young lady came for me to do something, blah, 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 blah. So that if she see them leaving, she kind of know what is what. Are you understand what I'm saying? You're a Christian, you get it? So you have to shun the what? The very appearance of evil. Because if somebody's there, the weakness to say that nothing like that went on, then what? They, she can talk, right? Good, but when I didn't tell anybody, I notified anybody, you see people coming in. My wife is not there. People coming in and going out of my house. Females I'm talking. And then by the time my wife hears it now, she probably wouldn't think anything, but everybody is going to be thinking something. You're a Christian. You understand what I'm saying? You're a Christian. So granted that I've been around females by myself, okay? But guess what? I grow big enough and understand now, don't be no smart guy no more. Because it's not what people really going to know that's going to sink you. It's what they perceive is going to sink you. Clap your hands. Give the Lord praise somebody. Give him glory again. So he tells you, abstain. That means when you're dealing with things and all of that, abstain from their parents. 
If it looks like evil, get rid of it. If you're going to walk with God worthy of him and his calling, you've got to abstain from the appearance of evil. That calls for thinking. That calls for looking deep into a matter before you do anything. Because you're a Christian. I'm a pastor in this church, so I can't just mingle with people just like that. Me alone. Get it? Because when you hear, you're going to start thinking. Hello? So you got to understand then you must walk circumwat, speckly. Praise ye the Lord. Glory to God. Verse 23 says on the last verse there, what he tells you here. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Everything. Spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved. Blameless unto. So God wants you to be preserved unto, unto the coming of Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. He didn't say body, soul, and spirit. He begins with the spirit first. Soul and body. And that's why when you see Christians putting tattoos on their bodies and so on, God said he sanctified the body. Everything holy. Spirit, soul, and body. Are you seeing that? Everything. The three components of you is sanctified holy. And that's why you can't slap tattoos on your body and do anything to your body. And young people taken up with drugs and all of this kind of stuff. Your body is a temple of what? The living God. And God wants every part of you to be sanctified. Hello somebody. He wants every part of you to be holy. And you got to understand when God requires you to be holy. Remember this. When he comes and you are not you will never make it into the kingdom of God. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. The Bible said you will never see God except you are holy. You'll never see God except you're sanctified. You will never see him except you're consecrated. Are you willing to run that risk? Hello? Are you willing to run that risk? Jesus is coming soon. Can you afford to not make it into the kingdom? Can you afford to go to hell? Can you afford to go to Tartarus? Can you afford to go to Gehenna? Can you afford to go to any of them? Then I say to you today, if you don't start walking the way you should walk, then you got to understand, God said he's going to send a strong delusion in this earth that people will believe a lie. Those who have turned away from the truth, if it's not the truth they are believing, they're going to believe a lie. And because they seem like they're succeeding and getting through, God is only giving them... Face. And he tells you that they're going to be condemned because they believe the lie and reject the truth. The question is, where do you stand with God? Are you sold out for God? Are you sold out to truth? Are you sold out to righteousness? Or when it is convenient, are you really standing with God? Then you have to examine your own motive and your own mind, your own heart and your spirit. Whether or not you are standing with God. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Stand to your feet. Glory to God somebody. Oh hallelujah. 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 It's not time sometimes to jump and make noise. I get used to Pentecostals now. That's what they like. And Prophet James preaching some deep stuff. A lot of them they gone to sleep. Because they're not jinging and banging anymore. I found out that Pentecostals, many of them, they don't like to learn. They like stuff that touch their emotions. Where well, they got to unhook your emotions sometimes for you to learn what God wants you to learn. Because all that you need to learn from the Bible is what's going to make you stand. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Praise ye the Lord somebody. You ever see some Baptist people, they act like they have the spirit and when they are singing, you think they have the spirit the way they are going? And they have no Holy Ghost, you know. They just feel excited. <laughs> Glory to God, somebody. But you got to understand, it's going to take more than that. Too much tribulation, he tells you, you shall enter into the kingdom of God. So you're here and you don't think you need to pass through anything, all of that kind of stuff. Then you got to understand, if anybody live godly in this life, you're going to suffer persecution. And so all these things are coming up on the earth now. And we see revelation is coming in full view now. And you got to understand, my friend, 
that people are not going to like you a lot of times because you stand up for the truth. And they're not going to love you because you're good. They're going to hate you because you're good. And yet you still have to open your mouth and say what God said. What are you going to do in that time? Hello? It's easy to talk about now, right? Seriously. But what happens when you can't say you are sinning against God and only to know somebody going to put, throw you in jail for it? Call the authorities and you're gone to jail. Will you stand up for God then? Will you? Hello? I'm t telling you serious things are going to happen around the world. And Satan has orchestrated it against God's people. Are you understanding that? Because he's, he is, his intent is to destroy Christianity. See that? That's his intent. And so far he is making inroad into Christian churches. And God's people, many of them are sleeping. Well, God said, wake up now. It's time to pray. When you think of France and you think of Germany and Merkel, Miss Merkel, is she's trying to get them to overturn the law with the one with incest to reinstate it. She's a Christian Democrat, as they say in Germany, and she's praying. Somebody got to pray for the nations of the earth. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Somebody got to lift up their voices for God's people are living in those nations. And you are a prime, prime, prime person to pray for the nations too. You cannot pray for only your family anymore and your children and your grandmother and your this and your that. There are many of God's people living in those countries and they are persecuted for their faith. And somebody got to pray. That God will raise up a standard among them. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bow your heads, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray for us now that we will learn to pursue the things of the Spirit. I pray, Lord, we'll pay attention now to your word, to the prophecies that are coming to pass. I pray, Lord, you'll open our ears to your spirit, that even as it is written in your word, that we might hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Oh, hallelujah! I pray, Lord God of hosts, that we'll hear the voice of the spirit, and we will turn our hearts to attend to the things of your word. Mighty God, for a generation that is on a precipice, Lord God, about to slide, mother God, straight into hell. And somebody has to stand up and make up the hedge, Lord. We pray that we will be that people. We pray that we will be that individual, Lord God of hosts, who will stand up in the edge. Mighty God, and make it up so that you'll not have to judge the nations. You said, Lord God, I am looking for a man. Who will stand up to make up the hedges, Lord. And you said you could not find none in the time of Ezekiel. And as a result, you are to judge the nation, Lord. But you are looking for a man to stand. You are looking for a woman to stand, Lord God of hosts. And so we pray, Lord, you will give us the power. You will give us the strength, mighty God. That we will pray, Lord, and we will seek your face. And almighty oh God, hallelujah, we will touch the throne of God. That things will happen, Lord. Oh God, that you alone, Jesus, will be glorified. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Make us servants of God. Draw us near you, Lord. Our weaknesses, Lord, we pray that God, you'll give us strength over all of them. Mighty God, the things that we stumble over, give us strength to overcome them now. That we might be children of the living God. Walking in righteousness. Walking in truth. Worthy Lord of you. And the calling upon our lives. Touch us now we pray. And grant us your grace. And we give you glory and praise. In Jesus name. Yes Lord.
Touch Minister Warren as she goes. Jesus, I pray that she'll be a blessing to them when she reaches. And I pray for Brother Mackey's children, Lord, who are leaving, that God, your hands will be with them and you will touch them. I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord, will touch their mother too. And mighty God, I pray peace will abide in their home through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, God, I pray for the husbands or the wives who are here, Lord, and have not yet learned how to walk with you. I pray for those husbands, almighty God, and I lift up Mr. Nibs, almighty God, Mr. McCleary, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And whomever else, Lord God, I pray you'll touch them. Those who are slipping, Lord, bring them near, Lord. Jesus. Your children, Lord, draw them, Lord, that they may walk with you. So now, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of grace and supplication will be upon this people. Oh, glory, Jesus. Commonly called the spirit of prayer. I pray, Lord, it will be, Lord, upon each of us that we will learn how to call on you in truth. That mighty God, you will protect us in this wicked, vile generation that we are seeing emerging across the face of the earth. Father, now we commit ourselves to you. Mighty God, our minds, we commit our hearts. We commit our spirits, our souls, and our bodies to you. Raise us up now. Cause us to do great exploit. Even by thy name, Jesus, and we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Clap your hands, somebody. Give the Lord praise. Give him glory. Come on, give him praise and glory. Give him praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And please remember, tomorrow you already announced that, right? The back to school thing. You said it's what? One o'clock. One thirty. Okay, good. Praise the Lord. Everybody lift your hands to Jesus. As you leave here.